Hello and welcome back to the Student Midwife Notes podcast. Today I have a very special guest, Amy, who is also on Instagram, has a student midwife Instagram page called With Wonderful Women. So if you don't already follow her, please go ahead and give her a follow. Thanks. So <laughs> just a shameless plug to start off with. Amy is a second year student midwife and she did an, a midwifery apprenticeship to get onto the courses. Very few of those around the UK, but she used to live in an area which did one. And we're going to talk all about that today. Just a small disclaimer before we really get into it. We are in a busy house today. (laughs) (laughs) And there's other people doing their business around. So if you hear the stairs creaking or the odd laugh or whatever... (laughs) It'll just be them, but please don't. It will try add and to it. it. Yeah, we'll just add to the <laughs> ambiance. So yeah, please don't let it distract you. So let's jump into it. So, Amy, my first question to everyone. It's always mm. the toughest question, so we'll just get it out of the way. What was it that made you want to pursue midwifery as a career? Million dollar question, really, isn't it? Yeah, I'm um, sure <laughs> women ask me all the time. It's so hard. I'd say I've always wanted um, to be in like the healthcare sector. Um, and I think what better way to kind of give back than to look mm-hmm. after women, girl power and all that. And I just love the idea of walking into a room with two people and coming out with three. Yeah. I think it just, <laughs> it's ridiculous and I love it. It never gets old. Um, and generally women are well and I quite like looking after mm-hmm. well people yeah. and the education side of things. So yeah, kind of it. That's what it was. So you did a midwifery apprenticeship. Yeah. And can you just explain a little bit about... Um, how you found out about it and what you needed to do to apply and get onto the apprenticeship program. Just a little bit of background, because I'm sure a lot of people won't know much about it. I didn't know anything about it until I met you. So yeah, give us a bit of background. So it was A-level results day and I didn't do brilliantly. <laughs> Same. And there was a lot of tears, a lot of tears. Same. And my mum was like, it's fine, we're going to work it out. And she chatted to a friend of a friend who said, oh, I work at a local hospital and I do this apprenticeship thing. And I rang up the college and kind of got some more information about it. And it was a level three diploma in maternity and paediatric support. And they invited me down. I had numerous interviews and got onto the course. It was really hard to get onto. I think there was over 150 of us that applied wow. and there were seven places. Ooh. And we were the second group of girls to do it in the country. So it was completely brand new. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's the best thing I ever did, really. I loved it. Yeah. So what what was the interview process like? What did they get you to do? So we had to do, I guess, like a personal statement for uni. Mm -hmm. If I remember, it was, oh God, it was so long ago. And they, one lady interviewed me just to kind of see how I was as a person. Could I have good conversation? And then I was interviewed by my tutor, Liz. Shout out to Liz. Mm -hmm. She's my favourite person ever. Um, And we discussed, you know, the classic 60s communication, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I was interviewed while I was in Florida. Oh, so like they, on Zoom? Yeah, or? on Zoom, basically. <laughs> so they said, oh, can you come for an interview? And I said, oh, sorry, I'm kind of on the other side of the world. And they said, no worries, we'll Skype you. And the next day I got a call saying that I got it. Oh, that's yeah. fun. That's yeah. really fun. Okay, so yeah, that's a nice little story. So, mm. But it was tough to get into. I can imagine they're all quite competitive. Yeah, yeah. I think because especially we were the second group of girls to do it mm. in the country everyone was like well this is really exciting this Mm -hmm. is brand new and I think a lot of people applied and yeah I was really really lucky yeah that is great yeah so what did the apprenticeship involve and you know what were the credits qualifications that you needed to get from it in order to apply to midwifery so I gave them my a-level results I didn't do brilliantly I got cdd not brilliant but wasn't terrible it's actually better than me Um, okay (laughs) and um I just gave them a personal statement and I said look it's it's something that I'm really passionate about um and then I had the interviews and that was all fine and then I came out at the end of it with a level three diploma in maternity and paediatric support okay so that's what it is like a level three qualification yeah and that goes to the universities and that yeah but that was half the struggle because it was brand new UCAS didn't recognize it so a lot of unis okay, yeah. were like mm, it's not really a thing and actually when you look on the NMC it's recognized so that was that was a struggle to even get into yeah. uni even though it counted so at the time how many unis was it that were taking it do you know um I think so I looked at Plymouth Bournemouth Canterbury um but I emailed Oxford Brooks, um, Worcester, Chester, everywhere really, because I'm local to Somerset, so all around there. And they all said, no, don't bother. Oh. I know. 
<laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> I'm sure more places must accept it now, so I think it is yeah. more common. Yeah, yeah, it's really grown in popularity. I think mm. people realise that, you know, it's not all about the academia. You actually need skills. You could be an A-star student, but actually, can you communicate with women? Can you mm-hmm. communicate with families? So I think yeah, it's picked exactly. up. So what was it that they had you doing? What did a typical week look like for you? Was it like mm. blocks or what? So happened? we had every Wednesday we were in college nine till four and we do essays every week. I think I wrote over 40 essays Ew. covering feeding, infection control, PPE, classic, classic stuff. Mm-hmm. And we, we worked for a year, 37 and a half hours a week on the wards. So I did three months on labour ward, three months on the antenatal ward, a month in antenatal clinic, a month in community, a month on the birth place, the birth centre, and three months postnatal. And that wow. was it. So you we went everywhere. So you did 37 hours a week plus nine to four in uni. In, every yeah, in college, single yeah. week. Yeah, college, yeah. every single week. Wait, how many hours is nine till four? It was Seven a lot. Hours. I mean, sometimes we would go home slightly earlier and we'd do some e-learning online. And you were writing like an was, essay a week and assignments. It, it, it was it was it was heavy. I feel like that's more full time than what we do I now. I mean, the essays weren't massive. It wasn't like a four thousand mm-hmm. word essay or anything, but it was more. I guess kind of more in the style of a workbook. We had certain questions and we answered them, and then we mm-hmm. kind of put them in an essay format. Yeah, wow. I guess it was, it was sort of That's like that. really tough. Yeah, it was hard, but I loved it. It was yeah. the best thing I ever did. To be fair, I think I would have preferred that. I would have been much more motivated to work yeah, if I was doing that. Because we actually got a sense of what was happening um, on the wards, because only two of us girls out of the seven have actually pursued midwifery. Everyone else said, actually, it's not for me, oh. or I purely want to be an MCA. One person left to do, like, equine massage you know you couldn't get further away from midwifery so it was a good way to kind of be out on the shop floor and see the reality of it to be honest that's very interesting that only two of you actually went on to pursue Mm. midwifery wow yeah my friend she's qualifying in six feet she's a year above me Ew, that's the same as yeah. me. I don't want to finish yet. <laughs> <It'll be fine. laughs> so what unique experiences do you think you gained from doing an apprenticeship which others may not get? So, for example, myself or Jess, who mm. was purely academic before uni. I think because I, I was essentially a maternity care assistant. That was mm-hmm. my role. Um, and it was just actually getting on with the work we had some theory and then I just learned from all the midwives and the MCAs and I was giving breastfeeding support in my hospital the MCAs on labour ward were the runners in theatre so I was a bit of a drama magnet and (laughs) I always had the PPHs and shoulders associates and everything like that so although um it was chaotic I learned a lot from it I it was it was a small hospital than what my placement is now. So we had a really good relationship mm-hmm. with the doctors. Um, reg- it was a smaller team, so you knew everyone really well. Just And they, they knew that I wanted to carry on with midwifery, so they'd invite me to training days. They'd, you know, say, well, what do you think of a CTG? Oh, God. Little, little oh. baby Amy, MC Amy. Um, and they'd really encourage me to kind of learn beyond my role. Mm-hmm. So I think skills like taking blood and stuff, just basic stuff now yeah. actually it just gave me confidence more than anything that's amazing that you learned that before even coming to university because yeah. I remember I remember meeting Amy when she was a first year and I just started second year and I thought to myself oh my gosh this girl actually knows more than me <laughs> <laughs> and she's only just started the degree I think the practical experience is incredible mm-hmm. and I do part of me wishes that that was more common and that's the way to get into midwifery still. Because I think first yeah. year for me was a breeze. Yeah. Like besides the academic stuff, because I'd rock up my first day and they're like, oh, today we're going to learn how to check someone's pulse and do a blood <laughs> pressure. And I was like, honey, <laughs> I've got this. And I could just crack on and do other stuff. So I didn't have to worry so yeah. much about And you just knew what the things bottom. were. Yeah. Like, you knew the words <laughs> shoulder dystocia before you even started. Yeah. Which is actually mad, because I'd never heard that word. I was word. teaching you stuff about breastfeeding. Literally. <laughs> I was like, okay. Uh, yeah. It's actually crazy how much that you got from that experience. But it doesn't surprise me either, because I think that we get the majority of our real learning from placement experiences yeah, rather you just, than in uni. And especially when you love the topic and you love the job, mm-hmm. you absorb so much information without really realising um and yeah I just I loved it 
Yeah. Yeah, I feel like being an MCO must have been so helpful because I just remember being a first year and people being like, can you go get me a Baxter pump? And I'm like, in an emergency. Mm -hmm. So I'm stressed already. So example, is a PPH. Mm. And you're just standing outside the doors because you'll if you go in there, you'll be useless. But people can like ask you to run and go get things. Yeah. But they're like, can you go get me a Baxter pump? And I'm like, yeah. And I don't know what a Baxter pump is. <laughs> well, I do now, but in first year, I was like, I don't know what that is. Somebody yeah. please help me. I'm in the way. I felt like every day I was putting out the major hemorrhage protocol and, <laughs> oh God, that was just my life. But I love, I love the drama. Is that yeah, weird? That is weird, to be I'm fair. A, I'm a bit of a weirdo. But back to um, the college side, we also got assessed on placement. Okay. For a year. So we had skills, I guess kind of like our pads now. Mm-hmm. And we'd have certain skills and we'd have to um, be witness doing it twice and then we would get signed off. Oh. And our tutor would come in and she'd watch me do an elective section. Um, she watched me do a cat one called prolapse, which was not the plan. Um, oh, or, so, wait, so that happened, but it didn't... Wait, what? Yeah, so she was meant to see me, um, assess me, do an elective section and, mm-hmm. you know, prep with the scrub nurse, etc., and we ended up having a cat one called Prolapse come in and she said, oh, I'm going to assess this one too. Oh, thought, my God. Oh, my God. Um, and it was fine. Everyone was fine. Um, she saw me give breastfeeding support. So loads of stuff, really. That's really, yeah. really good. It's basically mini uni, baby yeah, uni. Yeah, just like a, <laughs> like a trial run. Yeah. I love yeah. that. I really love that. So obviously a lot of the time with personal statements, they will say to like A-level students or access students, your qualification isn't enough. We need you to show us some extracurriculars where you would have gained some transferable skills, which show that you would make a good midwife. So what um, extracurriculars, if any, did you have or other skills and experiences did you get from your time before uni? So maybe in school or things that you did in your personal life, which when you were writing your personal statement, did you put in that sort of gave you those Um, transferable skills and how did you link them to midwifery so as well as the apprenticeship I then was employed full-time for a year as an MCA I worked in a shoe shop and again dealing with the public it has its challenges um, adapting to situations Um, I was in charge of the float and all the money so it shows that I was responsible Mm -hmm. Um, I was a dance teacher for a little bit I had a little tap class Yeah, were they like little kids? They were a nightmare, but they were cute. (laughs) They were cute. Um, So it was discipline and again communication with different different groups of people, Mm -hmm. ages, disabilities, languages. um, And I was a lifeguard. A lifeguard. Yeah, and I taught kids how to be lifeguards too. Um, And I did. I volunteered, so again, it showed commitment. Mm -hmm. Six C's again. so yeah, you, you can kind of pull skills from anywhere. Even if you worked in Asda, you can say you're dealing with the public. Mm-hmm. You know, you show up to work on time. Um, you know, you help out people. You work as a team. So it all it all yeah. counts. That's really. You had so many things. Mm. You know, Jess last week was like, yeah, I didn't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was it, it was like, hard to put huh? it in my statement. You know yeah. how hard statements are. Because you don't have that many words. No, I was the same. I had like all these different things. I was like, oh, just guess I'll jumble them all together and link them to midwifery. But that's interesting. You had a lot of things and you had a lot of practical experience. Yeah. Yeah. How did you find the interview process when you got there? Did you feel like you were able? Yeah. Were you able to? Chilled. Yeah. Yeah. I felt fine. Not in like a an arrogant sense. I just i I had a very good understanding of what midwifery was. Yeah and I knew I could answer questions I'd done my research I knew it wasn't just all about catching babies Mm -hmm. it was public health the politics behind it um so I knew I had loads in my toolbox to kind of talk about Mm -hmm. so I quite I enjoyed it yeah so where most people get that information from google Mm -hmm. like me you had the practical experience I'm sure you were you able to bring in examples yeah I spoke about um just running for PPHs or scribing or we were an early adopter site for the Better Births programme. So I spoke about that and continuity of care. Um, So I could bring loads of experiences in. um, And it it just obviously worked. Thank God. Yeah, (laughs) that's so interesting. I'm sure that they thought you were like a top candidate. I did enjoy it. Yeah, because to me this all just sounds like... And I, I was nervous because obviously I, I really wanted to get it in. Mm-hmm. Um, but afterwards I kind of felt actually, no, I do know what I'm doing mm-hmm. and actually it'll, it'll work out if it 
if it's meant to be. Yeah, yeah. I think that's always the way, really, isn't it? So, obviously, did you apply to midwifery when you did your A levels? Yeah. And did you get in? No. To no places? No. Because my A levels are rubbish. <laughs> but did you get offers? No. Oh. No, I didn't get anything, which is hence the tears. Yeah. The crying. Okay. So, yeah, that was. Um, not brilliant and then I thought actually no there's other ways to do yeah. it and then found the apprenticeship so when you did your ways. UCAS in a in like year 13 was it year 13 you do yeah, UCAS? Year 13, yeah yeah you apply to universities did you get interviews no I didn't get anything oh my gosh and honestly and looking back at my statement then Is it compared badass? to the one Lucy <laughs> I mentioned one born every minute Amy I know I hate myself <laughs> you, from, you like you went from the worst from the worst person statement it's probably like the best yeah, I read it and I just cringed and I thought no wonder it went straight into the bin <laughs> it was awful I wouldn't employ myself <laughs> no way that but the difference so I yeah yeah because I think before I was like um I loved look you know my mum had friends with kids and I loved cuddling babies and I watched one born every minute and I just thought ah. oh my god so this you're, is awful was just textbook no we will not employ yeah I did everything woman. wrong you did everything, I did everything wrong. wrong wow I didn't get much support at sick form actually yeah that was where I was going to come from so at school I think I spoke about this with Jess last week some tutors college tutors um teachers are very reluctant to support people to go into midwifery mm-hmm. because it's hard mm-hmm. and this is my conspiracy theory they don't like people applying for midwifery because they just want people to get onto a university course so it looks good on their numbers yes and obviously midwifery being notoriously hard mm. that just the probability of that looking good on them is quite low so that sometimes i think that that's what happens there but did you find that when you went onto the apprenticeship, you got lots of support on yeah. writing a personal statement and preparing yourself for interview? Yeah. I mean, in sick form, I was told I would never do healthcare. How funny is that? And when I told them I was going to do an apprenticeship, they were like, oh my God, you'll never do anything mm. with your life. And then I did the apprenticeship and the midwives were like, let me read your statement. I can yeah. help you. This is what they want. This is what we do. And my tutor, Liz, again, was fantastic. She's been a midwife for forever. So shout she knew exactly... Yeah, shout out, Liz. <laughs> um, so she knew exactly exactly what I needed to write. And yeah. even though I kind of... I wrote it, she was like, you need to phrase it a bit better and this is the language that we'd use yeah. so it would help you. So I had so much support compared to A-levels. Again, they were um, not particularly helpful. It makes me really sad when people say that because Jess, yeah. I think, Jess said the same thing. Um, and I know there's people who I've seen like on Instagram who are like, yeah, my A-level teachers told me I'd never be a midwife. I'm like, why would you say that to someone? I, I never had that experience. Really? Yeah, they just told me that it's hard to get onto. But I mean, I but was... they didn't a... like stop you? No, they didn't but you off. know I was extra in school. Mm, so that's very true. I was the head girl, shout out yeah. to myself. So they were never going to tell I me no. I did head girl. <laughs> did you go for it? Of course I went for it. And I did not get it. Let's not even go there. This Sorry, I'm just bringing out all the, all the hard truths. All the, <laughs> Triggered. All the Amy's triggers out now. Yeah, so the school was never going to tell me no. Mm. And I think, That's good you know, you. if people <laughs> if people know who know me, know you can't tell me not to do something because I'll just do it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and you'll probably do it better because you put more effort into it. <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, but yeah, it makes me really sad when people say that their schools... I just don't think school... I think schools don't understand what midwifery is. So yeah. therefore, they're not prepared battle, to support people to do it. Because yeah. they don't know themselves what to write. They don't know what we do. Yeah. Which is fair enough. They're, they're a teacher, but they yeah. don't even kind of help you find someone who help who knows what yeah. they're doing so well to all those people doing a-levels i hope that my podcast everything is helpful you can do it because you can do it we want you ignore the teachers just do it anyway so where did i get to on here so what would so what advice would you give to someone who's applying to or considering applying for midwifery um from doing a, a midwifery apprenticeship course first or someone who's wanting to go on to the apprenticeship? I think if you can do the apprenticeship, it is the best thing you will ever do. Because it's only another year. Did you have to pay for it? No. It was an apprenticeship. I got paid oh, yeah. about £4 an hour. <laughs> no, I know, it was great. Um, so that, that was hard going from £10 an hour at the shop to £4 an mm. hour. And so that was funded by but, the trust? 
Yeah. Okay. But I also di- I did work in the shoe shop alongside the apprenticeship, so I was doing. What bit. time did you have left in the week? I had no time. That's horrible. I have more time now at uni, and I still don't get things done. <laughs> 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 Let's not even go there. Um, that's your question. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Advice. Yeah. If you can get onto the apprenticeship, I'd recommend it to anyone. It's only a year. Actually, I think it might be eighteen months now. Mm-hmm. You'll have to check online wherever you are. Um, but it's the skills that you get, your confidence. I think more than anything, my confidence just soared. Mm-hmm. Talking to people, new people, um, and actually putting my mind to something and thinking, yeah, I, I can actually do this. Um, in terms of coming from the apprenticeship and writing your statement, just write everything you know. Public health, the, again, communication, the skills you have. And it, while it's great saying, oh, I, I can do this skill and this skill, okay, that's fine as an MCA, but why is it helpful as a midwife? Do midwives also do those skills? Can you, will that enhance your learning when you're at university? So you still have to apply it to the role of a midwife, even though you're an MCA. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where some people kind of fall short. Yeah. So like, I'm an an MCA, which is fantastic, but actually you need to step beyond that because the role levels up. (laughs) Yeah. So moving on from the chat about your course, there are a couple other things which I want to mention, also something I've not put on here. Okay. but that would be a little surprise Ooh. question in a second so just this is now a bit more about your uni experience so you went straight into a student house in first year and that's how I met you yeah. Amy lives in a house with my sort of really close friends from my cohort Jess and Peggy and Poppy as well now who wasn't here a year ago but that's a story not relevant for the podcast <laughs> so yeah Amy moved straight into this house she didn't know any of us she didn't realize that she was going to have a fifth housemate me mm-hmm. um and what was this experience like? Because would you rec- well would you recommend it over halls? Because I know you know halls as a student midwife can be tough. Jess spoke about that last week. She was lucky, but I know some people aren't. So would you recommend going straight into a house? What's your experience? Um, I've loved coming straight into a house. So for me, I didn't want to do halls because I didn't want to live with five hundred boys that would listen to grime music at two <laughs> o'clock in the morning, and I've got a shift the next day. Yeah. Um, and so I found the girls on Facebook, classic stalker and we facetimed to check that we're not all really odd and annoying and um i think jess just put out a post that said oh you know we're all student midwives we've yeah. got a healthcare student specifically and i said oh okay i'm gonna be a student midwife had a chat and that was that and we, i kind of showed up on the first day and was like hi i'm amy and then within about two weeks or so when we all moved in it was like we'd known each other for years mm-hmm. um but I think from the girls that have been in halls, um, who have been with other student midwives in halls and other healthcare students, they've had a good time. But personally, I'd say if you can get a house, do it. I feel like houses are cheaper as well. It oh, so much cheaper, so much cheaper. Like probably less, more than half the mm-hmm. half the rent of halls, really. Well, I'm very glad you came to the house. To be honest, same. Otherwise, you wouldn't have. I met when me. I first met you. Same, and then I remember I saw you again like two days later and you forgot who I was. Yeah. And then Amy thought I was so rude. I was just bantering you. And I was like, oh, what's your name? And you were like, like, Lucy, I met you yesterday. yesterday. But I was just bantering you and Amy thought I was mean for a bit. And I thought, oh God, I've I've upset someone within about 48 hours of moving here. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, oh, she's going to be around the house all the time. You would never upset me. So here we go. Here's your surprise question, which I didn't prepare you for. Amy's now the president of our Midsoc. And... I was on the Midsoc committee for two years. I'm not on it anymore, obviously, because that had to kick me out because I really finished my it. degree, so I wasn't allowed to stay, obviously. Um, and Amy's taken over the role of president. She was also in the committee last year as a I cohort was. rep. So would you recommend getting involved with your Midsoc? Obviously, you know I would. Yeah? Yeah, I've, I've loved it. So I, yeah, I was a cohort rep for the first year, although I was kind of the lowest of the low in the... No, in the hierarchy we rate the I cohort reps yeah <laughs> um yeah we still got involved as much as possible and if anything it looks really good on your cv when you go for a job because yeah. it shows that you know you're enthusiastic and it's not just a case of showing up to placement and then you come home again you really care about midwifery and you i'm not saying you spend your whole life doing it um but you're passionate about educating other students, benefiting your own knowledge, mm-hmm. um, just giving back to the community and the university. I'd like to think I'm a very active member. 
Well, you're the president, um, so I'd like to think you're a yeah, very active and I'm member. and I'm a student ambassador as well. Oh, yeah. So I was reminded yesterday by my lecturer, because I forgot. Yeah, I forgot you were a student ambassador. <laughs> yeah. So I've, um, I've interviewed students, and I've done open days, and I, I just love it. It's good fun, more mm-hmm. than anything. You meet people from different cohorts that you probably wouldn't have met that's my favorite thing we, about being a mid at our university we've got two different campuses so it's nice to kind of meet people from the other side um yeah it's good fun we had balls we had just meetups coffee the conference buddy thing we had loads of stuff so i loved it i love my little purple mid sock t-shirt yeah and another little badge that i can yeah. put in my collection to say yeah mid socks yeah. are great because they run study days which you can put in your portfolio. Yeah, so I got, would 100% recommend we've you. We've got certificates, so that all adds to your profile. Um, and it shows that you're keen and you're enthusiastic mm-hmm. and you're committed and actually you're not, you're not just doing the bare minimum to scrape through. Yeah. Okay, so final question, unless I tangent off of the end of this Go one. On. So what are your career goals? Where do you see yourself <laughs> in the future as a midwife? So, you know, long term, 10 years, short term, five years or anything more? What's something you really want to achieve with your midwifery degree? Again, another million dollar question. Yeah, I like to start and end with them. <laughs> yeah, sure. Nice, nice bookends for the end of the <laughs> yeah. podcast. Um, I've really enjoyed kind of the education, public health side mm-hmm. of things. Something that I am passionate about, and I, I don't know how I'd go about it, but is um, training paramedics. Because mm-hmm. they only get, I think it's two weeks learning for obstetrics how to deliver a baby in two weeks and actually that's impossible because usually if an ambulance is called something's usually gone wrong Mm. and they're not midwives by any stretch and they come in and they're all nervous and they're traumatized and i think i don't think it's fair on them i don't think it's fair on the midwives to pick up all the stuff that hasn't been done and i certainly don't think it's fair on the women to have someone who is so nervous about giving Mm -hmm. their care i think it's just a a loss for everyone um so i'd love to do that facilitate some learning i do you think i'd be good at lecturing yeah i like to talk can yeah you tell? that's all you need yeah why would you ask me that? <laughs> of i don't know if I... I think you'd be good at lecturing what could you see me doing um labeled coordinator 100 oh, yes. percent. that would just be amy because she that. just loves the drama like she likes the high risk stuff although you've said a lot of stuff about like that would be like community based but i know that amy just loves emergencies yeah and i'd quite like to be student lead yeah looking after the students yeah not so much doing the rotors yeah that is but long. actually making sure that they're okay they're getting support because yeah. i know i've had really good support so it makes a huge difference to your time so yeah mm. I don't really know. I don't know where we've I'm going. Got, that's what I was saying with Jess. We've got a long old time to just do whatever we want with it. Mm. Like we said yesterday, like we have potentially like forty years in the NHS <sighs> as midwives. Do you want to say that dramatically? I've said that very dramatically <laughs> in the last one. It almost broke my speakers. Um, yeah, so it will look very different. So, what's like one thing you hope will be different? Again, another hard question, Lucy. They asked me that interview, like so I'm just keeping that um, one to traumatise other people with. What do I hope is different? I think we need to bring back continuity of care. 100% agree. Continuity of care is so, so important. We know this. We just need more funding. We need more staff. Mm. We need people who are listening to apply and be midwives. So continuity is something that I would love to see more. Because the yeah. women love it, and I enjoy seeing the women regularly. Yeah, I like... I mentioned this when I was applying for jobs. I said, you know, some of my favourite experiences have been the coincidental times where just the way my placement blocks have come together, I saw someone antenatally and then was working on the label the day that they came in to have their baby. And that was just a really, really nice experience. But it was completely coincidental. But I'd love to have more of those experiences where it's actually deliberate. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love that. We've done it before. I think we need to... We can do it again. Some midwives are very cynical about it. I was talking about it in the office the other day at work and they were like, "That's the divorce rate was so high when we were oh. doing continuity of care. I was, like, oh. <laughs> I was like, well, I'm not married yet. So, Anyway, do you have anything to add, Amy? Sorry, this is this 
podcast episode is a lot more unprofessional than with Jess because Jess is a bit more sensible. But but that's just us doing. That is just us. Well, we're not unprofessional, but we're anyway. This is a pilot, so I can do what I want in it. (laughs) Anyway, Amy, do you have anything you want to add as we leave? Any closing remarks? Please remember to follow Amy on Instagram at With Wonderful Women. Anything to add? I don't know. I just I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it, and I think if your heart's in it, you've just got to go for it. If you don't try, you'll never know. Mm -hmm. Um, It's not for everyone, but I think everyone who's done it loves it yeah and we've stuck it out it's hard work but it's so rewarding Uh the the world is always going to need midwives everywhere yeah so it's a job for life and i really enjoy working with women we Mm -hmm. keep each other going yeah again at uni i think it's a bit of a cliche when people say oh you know you'll make friends for life but it's completely true. 100%. I'm never leaving Lucy alone. You're <gasps> never getting rid of me. She made me get a job at the place where she practices. <laughs> I did. I want Lucy to deliver my 40th baby with me. <laughs> we're, just, we're just manifesting that at the moment. But we'll see what happens. That's the dream. Anyway, just to close about apprenticeships. If you live near somewhere where you can have the experience to do a midwifery apprenticeship and that's something you're in the position to do, I think we would both highly recommend it. I think the position that Amy arrived at university in, I was very jealous of. I wish I'd started at that point. I'm sure a lot of other people would agree. It really sets you up well. It's really well designed. But of course, it's not the only way to get in and that's why there's Mm. going to be however many episodes in this podcast series. So just to close off... Please subscribe to this podcast on any of the podcast listening apps that you use. Follow me on Instagram. If you're on YouTube, please like this video. Comment if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel. And yeah, just keep up to date with me on Instagram because that's where I'll be sharing all the info of where you can listen next or if anything changes when I'll be, you know, recording new episodes. So yeah, keep up to date with me on there. And also Amy at With Wonderful Women. Thank, Thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you for having me. I, I hope this it. isn't the last time we have Amy on. Oh, I'm sure it won't be. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.